In this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step how I painted Nami from one piece in watercolor. This whole painting took me quite a few hours to finish, um, but since a lot of the techniques are repetitive, you'll see a mixture of real time and sped up clips to make it a more efficient use of your time. So let's get started. First of all, we need a sketch of Nami. I sketched this pose um, digitally in Clip Studio Paint. And then I print it out on a regular piece of printer paper in black and white, um, just the rough sketch. And then I trace it onto my watercolor paper with a really hard mechanical pencil. I think it's a 2H. This is to avoid the smearing of the lead when I put the watercolor on. So I can keep my watercolor painting nice and clean. Now that I have the tracing, I tape my watercolor paper onto a piece of cardboard. This is a cheap way to keep your watercolor paper rigid during your painting session. I started with a light wash for the skin, starting from Nami's face and I plan to go downwards. So for the forehead, you can leave the, that portion light for now, because in my sketch, I didn't really sketch out exactly each strands of her bands. So my plan is to paint in the bands uh, freely with the brush later, and then I'll fill in the shadows on her forehead later after I finish the bands on her face. So the color I'm using is a mixture of quinacridone burnt orange with a tiny little bit of quinacridone burnt scarlet. Both are very diluted. So one important thing to note here is that to make sure you have plenty of paint on your brush so that the paint does not dry too quickly and form sharp edges. We want to avoid those watermarks on the skin because we want the skin to look nice and smooth. So our goal here is to paint a really smooth wash. If you have time, you can leave highlights as well. But if you find it's drying too quickly, it's okay. You can always add highlights in the end with white ink or gouache. So just focus on painting the smooth wash. Using the same technique, just continue to put a first wash on the rest of the body. Just focus on getting it smooth. Don't worry too much about darks and shadows for now. And if possible, you can put in the highlights. But mostly, this watch is just for you to easily tell where the skin is and where the highlights are if possible. So same thing for her jeans, you can just put down a light wash roughly indicating where the highlights are. Don't need to go into the details yet. Now we're on to the first wash of her hair. Since Nami has long loose curls, and I think it looks really nice if they look like they're flowing in the wind, so I used a lot of curved brush strokes. I didn't really sketch out each strand, I just do it randomly where I think it will look nice. This way I can keep it spontaneous and free. I have some strokes with darker oranges in there. That was just because the paint was really thick on my brush. I didn't really worry about it because this is basically to indicate the general shape of the hair without considering or planning out each of the individual strands. Once the first wash is dry, you can observe the watermarks that form naturally in the wash and then plan out each individual strands by adding shadows and darks. This way you can make it look very natural. For the edges of the hair, those loose strands, you can use paints that are more diluted to paint it in lightly. Um, so you can make it look like it's moving and blends in very well with the backgrounds.
Now that the first wash is completely dry, you can start adding the shadow tone to the skin. So what you need to do here is first pick a light source. I'm imagining the light source is coming from the top right corner, just above her head. So I'm just adding darker tones to make her look more three-dimensional, where the shadows should be. So you can just do the same thing for her whole body. Make sure you have enough paint on your brush and move quickly to avoid those watermarks, like what we did in the first wash. Nami has brown eyes. I forgot which brown I used here, but any transparent brown would do. I usually prefer transparent color for eyes. It's just make them more lifelike and more like a marble with the shines. So you want to use a small brush to be more accurate here. An easy way to paint an eye is to start from the top half with thicker paint and use water to drag it down to the lower half. This way you can make the lower half lighter to show the reflections. Also here is where you want to slow down and not rushing, so you can make sure you don't paint outside of the lines. It's going to be hard to fix on the face. It's going to be very obvious if you make a mistake. For the nose and mouth, you can use a very light color for now for the first wash, just to make sure you get the position right. So a color like a light red or light burnt scarlet would be really nice. You don't need to worry about the shadow yet, and you can add it on the second wash to increase the strength. And then now I move on to strengthen the shadows on her body. Now it's time to add more details to her hair. I'm using the same orange color as in the first wash, but with more strength. I forgot to mention the orange was called Aussie Red Gold from Daniel Smith. It's very vibrant. So just observe the first wash you did to her hair and add it to the strength that are in shadow so it doesn't look as flat. You don't have to be too careful because hair in real life is regular anyway and we want to make it look like it's flowing in the wind. So try to be random and not following a certain pattern to make it look rigid.
After adding the stronger oranges to her hair, now I'm using a rigger brush to add even stronger tones to where the hair strands overlapping each other. This is to indicate the shadows to make it even more three-dimensional looking. You see, I'm also holding another brush, which is slightly larger. This brush only has plain water and is used to dilute the edges of the strokes created by the rigger brush. So it's less rigid and more natural looking. So just keep doing this all over her hair until you're satisfied with the overall look. Now we're getting really close to finish. I'm going through her skin once again, just to add more shadows to make them stronger. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because her hair is very vibrant, so I feel the shadow on her skin is kind of lacking. It needs to be stronger as well. For her belt, you can first use a dark gray for the first wash and roughly paint out the money logo on her buckle. Once it's dry, you can add stronger black. While I'm at it, I'm also adding the shadows on her belt and the shadows on her jeans to indicate the folds. For her bikini, pay attention to the perspective and make sure the stripes are curved to show the roundness of her boobs. Blur some of the paints to indicate the shadow. Her jewelry is in the same green, so while I have the paint on my brush for the bikini, I painted that as well.
Konami's weapon is blue, so I'm painting in a light blue wash first. To show the metal texture, I'm leaving a stripe of long highlight along the stick. For the background, since we're looking at her at a slightly upward angle, I think a light blue indicating the sky would be really nice. Here I'm using a light phthalo blue wash around her hair, and an easy way to put in a background is to do a light wash first, and if you decide you like the look of the background, you can add stronger color later. Be really careful not to paint it over her hair, you don't want to kill the vibrancy of the orange. It won't be Nami without the tattoo. Her tattoo is a really dark blue or a navy-ish color, so simply follow your sketch and paint it on. Make sure you have enough paint on your brush so it's fluid and you can paint a solid line without breaking. We're at the final step, which is adding highlights. You can use either white opaque ink or white gouache. Here I'm using Kuretake white ink. You can simply go through your painting and identify which part is under the sunlight and should be reflective or any part of the detail that you want to pop that are in the shadow. Sometimes just a tiny dot of the white ink will make a difference. Oh, 